Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. And today I've got something really special that I've been waiting for about two weeks now to do. Unfortunately, not all the parts are still here yet, but here we go. Here is my what's in the bag for 2022. Um, as most of you already know, I am a Strixon staffer, so obviously the bag is going to be very heavy leaning towards the Strixon Cleveland lineup. Um, this isn't a bad thing. It's not a good thing. It's just what it is, and I'm pretty happy with the selections that they have for the most part. Um, in fact, if you go from Blade down to Game Improvement, there's pretty much a way to combo up any iron set possible just off of the four main offerings that they have. So... Let me go ahead and start with what didn't change, the magical three wood. Um, let me see uh, real quick here. ZX series 15 degree, that's what they call their standard three wood. It has the hazardous smoke black uh, standard, not an RDX, a little bit older model there. Uh, very low launch, low spin. Great for a little extra uh, control off the T if I need it. Uh, number two that didn't change, and again, uh, couldn't be happier with this putter. The Cleveland Frontline ISO Slant. So it's a little bit more of a toe hang putter. It is not a uh, squared up face balance putter. Uh, really love the feel of it. And this Lambkin custom grip that they have on there. Wonderful grip for me. Uh, just feels great in the hand. A little bit of texture to it. Makes it feel... Uh, just keeps you on your toes a little bit as far as touch goes. So... Um, those are the only two pieces in the bag that are not changing for this year. Now, that said, there's a couple of similarities, but not quite identicals in here. Uh, I'm going to start down at the wedges. And this is where I am still missing one piece. I have a third wedge on the way as soon as it's back in stock. But starting at the, the super high lofted end, the Cleveland RTX Zipcore 60 degree. Um, I'm going to go into the shafts and grips a little bit more here in a bit. That one is actually a 9 degree bounce full face model. Um, it's bent 1 degree strong, so it's a 59, so that makes the bounce 8 degrees. Uh, moving into standard wedges, now I'll have a second one of these coming in the bag as soon as it's back in stock. The 54 degree standard face in the RTX and the Tour Satin last year. Played the black, loved them. Uh, as I get into those changes in the uh, rest of the club there, you'll understand why I switched up to a different uh, model this year. Um, let's jump straight down to irons. This is where a pretty major change happened for me this year. Um, I'm starting off with the 7 through pitching wedge in the ZX7. And I'm going to jump straight into the change here that really made the difference for me as many of you know i've had some shoulder issues over the last year plus uh really shocked when i hit the ball right now so what i did was i upgraded into the aerotech steel fiber i-95 shaft which really lightened up the club it has some of that impact absorption built into the shaft just from it being graphite now to counterbalance the fact that this head felt pretty light on my 130 gram steel shafts from last year going down to a 95 gram this year that's a lot of head weight moving to the end i had two choices one was counterbalance the shaft with a heavier plug at the end number two was go to a larger size grip so this year i went to the mid-size mmc aligns rather than the standards so the plus four is still the non-tapered version a little bit bigger in the hand and the bonus to it is it's 12 grams heavier, so it gets rid of the need to have any counterbalancing done to the end of the shaft. Um, overall, swing weight is a half a point different than what I'm used to, so not all that bad. Again, that is the 7 iron through pitching wedge, all in the ZX7s. Now, as I move into the upper iron, so the 3 through 6 this year, uh, last year I carried the utility uh, utilities in the 3 and 4, five through uh, nine in the uh, ZX7s. This year I took the mid-step in the three through six. I went to the ZX5, again with the same Aerotech shaft, same grip. Um, the other advantage on the Aerotechs that I did this year that I forgot to mention in the sevens, I did hard step them. So they kick the ball a little bit lower and feel just a touch stiffer than standard. Um, so that again is the three through six iron. 
And then we move to the big dog this year, a big change up in this one. So last year, playing the ZX-7, nine and a half degree, uh, the smoke black, low launch, low spin shaft, never quite got it to where it was supposed to be. Tried playing with the loft a little bit, tried playing with a few other settings, couldn't really get it dialed in. Um, after some extremely long <laughs> sessions, I discovered the launch angle just wasn't there. About nine degrees is where it was sitting. Not going to be great for tournament play unless you're playing somewhere like, oh, I don't know, Pinehurst number two, where you wanted to rifle the ball below the wind and let it roll out. Worked fantastic there. Um, fortunately, this guy hadn't arrived yet, so I didn't think about taking him. But uh, this year, we switched up to the ZX-5 model. So that's a little more forgiving, higher MOI, uh, more of a straight shooter rather than a, a workable left to right. Um, also changed out the weight to a 12 gram in the bottom to give it a little bit more heft at the, the club head end. Um, and that is paired with a 360 Tour Velvet Grip. And I went 360 on this one instead of the Align because if I decide I want to rotate the shaft at all, Srixon's tap, uh, shaft tip ad adapter doesn't allow for changing it like the Callaway does where the grip will stay straight. So it just physically rotates the shaft around like this as you change settings. I don't anticipate that after getting this locked in where it should be. But if it does, I can rotate that around and all that happens is the little tour velvet or the little golf pride goes different and so does the shaft label. I can work with that. So into the shaft itself, Ventus Velicor from Fujikura, the blue in a 6X Flex. Again, keeping that 60 gram weight really felt good in last year's uh, hazardous smoke. Um, but the Velicor in the blue launch is just a little bit higher. I'm getting about 14 degrees of launch on this, which is right where I want it. Uh, picked me up about 35 total yards. Yes, 35. So carry went from about, you know, right in the 240 range out into the 270 to 280 range in the winter. So that really, uh, really does me okay for that one. Um, bag is staying the same. Um, um, as far as balls go, um, switched up a little bit because last year I was right in between the two of these, the Z star and the Z star XV. I loved the distance of the XV, but I loved the spin of the Z star. So when they told me that they were coming out with an in-between ball, that basically was the firmness of the XV and the spin of the Z-Star. I couldn't, uh, couldn't argue too much with them and went ahead and switched up to the Z-Star Diamond this year. Um, really a fantastic ball. Um, cover material is, is the same as the others, so it gets great feel off the face, works well off the putter. Um, haven't gotten to experience too much of the spin aspect of it yet because of how wet everything is here. But hopefully as the weather starts to improve here, like even today, we just got about two inches of rain in the last 24 hours. So we're just getting pummeled up here. Uh, but overall, very, very happy with how the bag is setting up. If you guys have any questions on what I've got in there club-wise, fire them through down below. Um, another couple of things, non-sponsored items, of course. I want to dig through here and pull out a couple of things. So let me move this in a little closer to the camera here. Um, the Bushnell Tour V5 Rangefinder. Um, I know there's a lot of other models out there. Um, there's something about the optics in the Bushnell that are just solid and I like it. Um, let's see if there's anything fun and exciting in here that you just need to see. I've got my little valuables pouch. This guy's great for keeping my ball mark and green repair tool in. Um, I guess I could cover the glove really quick as a non-glove wearer for so long. Um, this year, Switched up to the Strixon Cabretta. Um, real soft feel, uh, good fit. Um, if you haven't fitted a glove lately, make sure you do it. Um, so many of us just go in and, and get a glove and think it's close. You really want it to be just about right on the fingers. If your fingers are, are shorter than the glove, make sure you check out uh, the uh, cadet sizes. That's the same width palm as the standard, but just shorter fingers for those of us that have short fingers. All right, and other than that, that's about it for what's in the bag this year. Hopefully that didn't drag out too long and it stayed somewhat interesting for you. If you have questions on what's in the bag and why I went that way, fire away in the comments down below or shoot me a message, okay? Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next time.